Hey, welcome to Warriors Anonymous. We are off and running as we uh, as we always do. And Moneta is he's, he's doing something. Uh, my name is Jared Cronin. Um, yeah, welcome along to our second edition on YouTube, uh, which is pretty exciting and pretty frightening. Also, um, quite frightening looking back on the tape last week. I don't know if you fellas felt the same, but. Uh, a little bit weird. It's okay to see us or, or at least hear us on the podcast, but uh, but seeing us uh, on the screen there was like, ooh, hang on a minute, fellas. So uh, let's bring in the boys. Uh, first of all, we've got we'll go with the uh, the dancing man himself, Monita Sauce. Hey, bro. Yeah, I, I'm. You, you're totally right. I, I realised that we were going to have a YouTube uh, video of us, and I was like, oh my god, I sound like a little kid. But then. Uh, <laughs> But no, it was, it was good to see and uh, rewatch those, uh, rewatch the moment with when I royally effed up the questions <laughs> with, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, oh, was, it's a good thing. Yeah, you got your rattled. Yeah. Yeah. I got a rattled, boys. That was so good, man. Yeah. No, but it was good. It was good. We can only get better. That's right. You're going to try and sound like a, uh, a grown man tonight, are you? <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> We've also got Isaac Sauce. Hey, bro. Hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah, okay. first uh, episode down. Um, how many episodes to go? I don't know. Hopefully as many as possible this year. But yeah, weird watching the uh, playback on YouTube. Just weird. And mm. Hearing your own voice on, on video. I don't know why it made it even worse than on normal Spotify, but it was good. It's good to see some views and uh, good to see some subscribers there too, so appreciate it. Yeah, some people actually watched it. I can't believe it. Um, but also, in talking to you before we jumped on and recorded, Isaac, uh, you've you've made a, a bit of an improvement there to your uh, your filming setup. I can see it's uh, it's a little bit different than last week when you had the the standover tactic that you were you know looking into the screen and <laughs> trying to look menacing. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking watch Warriors Anonymous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the but, worst angle to catch some rogue white uh, nose hairs as well. So I thought, yeah, like the old uh, was it the Blair Witch Project or whatever was it? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The snot up the nose. Like. <laughs> well, if I tilt my head backwards, my nostrils will look like sunglasses. Be so big. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Speaking of improvements, Daniel Farakura, we've got you on the uh, the, the near shot tonight. Uh, yeah. After last week's uh, long distance uh, scenario, <laughs> what's uh, what's brought about that change, mate? <laughs> you say you just look back and um, if, when because we were doing this recorded, so I at least just lie on the ground and lie down, <laughs> drift off a little bit. Yeah, but you've got to be really yeah, game, yeah. you know. You've got to be showing yeah your A game. So I thought yeah. I'd get up close and personal, close and personal. And, and uh, everyone, <laughs> And I thought I'd smile a bit more because I didn't notice I wasn't smiling that much. I looked grumpy in moments, so I was like, oh, let's be a bit more smiley in this one. Oh, okay. Uh, a bit more engaging. Tips from engaging. the pros. Because, I mean, they did it on TV eh? when they do interviews and that, they just randomly look at the camera and smile for no reason. You're like, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, boys, uh, before we even get into chatting about the Warriors trial match, oh boy, what a good one that was. Uh, we're going to do a short balls about that trial match. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is um, describing the trial match as a TV show or, or any kind of show that we've stumbled across and uh, and reacted to. So uh, let's go with Buddha first up because uh, you had the, the idea for this one. Um, I think the idea is actually sausage, but I'll, I'll take oh, my it. Bad. My bad, sorry, um, sorry. That's okay. But I went with one of my all-time favorite shows, but when I was referred to it many years ago, um, there wasn't a lot of raps about it. Um, it was low budget as well, so, you know, there wasn't a lot of money spent on this series, but it was an absolute cracker, and that's The Wire. Ah, okay. About the police and the drug running in Baltimore City. It was mm. high-quality viewing as well, so low expectations going into it yep. by the end of it. I just wanted more and more and more, and that was, was exactly uh, what we got on on the trial match. I was certain you were about to say Red Shoe Diaries there, but um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that old classic, oh boy, <laughs> left, you hang, left you hanging and wanted more. Uh, speaking of TV shows, Isaac, the man with the idea for the short balls, bro. Sorry, uh, correction. <laughs> well, what show was uh, did this trial match remind you of? Uh, I have to say, recent show. 
uh, is I don't know if you guys have seen The Last of Us. Oh, you don't um, love one. <laughs> ooh, ooh, it is so good, eh? But um, like I knew it was going to be good, but um, every episode's just got better and better and better, and I'm 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 hooked. Um, God God bless uh, illegal streaming. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably it for me. But yeah, big ups to the Wire. That's a that's a great show as well. Pre streaming days, but it still counts. Yeah, no, that's been. <laughs> Damn it, now man. that uh, Moneda has He's had his me. first option taken off him. <laughs> Uh, has he managed to regroup in those few seconds and come up with another one? Well, it probably follows in the same vein, um, you know, low expectations, but, uh, you know, uh, pleasantly surprised. Um, you guys probably don't know it, but, you know, I'm a big fan of anime. <laughs> no, no, that one too. <laughs> no, uh, Red 2, no. Um, so, big fan of anime, and there's a show called uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. So I just happened to watch it, and next minute, I've been hooked on it for the last eight years. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, got you good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I thought you were going to say Takahashi's Castle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, okay. was going to say Dragon Ball, but no, that's actually gone downhill. So, <laughs> Right. Standards. Yeah. I actually, I'm going to stick with the, um, uh, not, well, not anime, but the animated kind of theme. Uh, the show that I stumbled across one time just randomly ended up being quite hilariously funny uh, and got me like you know quite good and that was archer i just i'd never even yeah. heard of the show i just turned it on found it one time on like channel four or whatever it was and i was like what is this and uh, it actually went pretty good so um just like the uh, the trial match that we had against the u.s tigers on thursday last thursday week. thursday um yeah so boys uh some good moments in that match um particularly I guess the hit of the year so far, and that was our boy Matello Montoya. Sebastian, uh, bro. That's it, bro. He, uh, he he made a bit of a um, speed bump out of poor old Charlie Staines Moneda. What did you think of Matello Inigo Montoya? Mate, he's just. I just reflect back on the first year how I was just giving a huge amount of shit, and now I think he's the, <laughs> like the man player, like just solid, eh? absolutely solid. So. And big hits and just charges it up and yeah, he's solid. So he has to be within the first uh, thirteen. But I like the conundrum that we have because I think I thought a lot of players stood up in the trial match. And I'm going to jump the gun a bit, but Metcalf, I'm drooling over that prospect. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's some <laughs> that's that's some extreme enthusiasm there. I like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, who did you? Uh, who, who was who was impressing you? Who was making you drool out on the field there? Ooh, if it's going to be drooling. Well, yeah, Metcalf has already spoken for, but Tom Arley, after I'd spoken about <laughs> the week before, it's his time to really step up and take the opportunity. How many minutes did he play? It felt like he played, you know, fifty Big or sixty match. minutes on the trot, mm. and every hit up had a bit of had a bit of gusto to it. And I'm like, ooh, if you can see that for you know, a big portion of the season. Um, there's no way um, you can leave him out of the 17, if not let him start. Because I think he's a good person to start the game. He's got that right amount of energy and enthusiasm, and that's in- infectious. So, yeah, I thought Tom Riley was my uh, drool player of the week. Mm. Um, but, yeah, yeah that man. hit on Charlie Staines. That was hilarious, though. <laughs> Staines believed he could fly. Yeah, he went all R. Kelly on it. Went, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, for just to, Charlie. Um, to back up that point, eh, like Tom Arley, I think we were searching, knowing we were, well, externally, you know, Warriors fans, knowing that uh, we're light in the four pack as well, with one really recognised front rower. Uh, Bunce, obviously, you know, had a, had a good game, added a pass to his game, you know, mm. he, was, he looked quite good. Um, but knowing that, yeah, it's a trouble area, it's nice to have. Tom Ali step up, mm. continue on from the back end of last year. And I went to the last game of the season against the Titans. We lost at the last minute. We dominated the game for the for seventy minutes. Oof. But he was awesome. His his PCM was great, his post contact meters, it was just physical, so um awesome. Um one thing I listened to over the week as well is uh the uh yeah, I think it's the NRL guru, um Aussie guy, Nathan 
Duncan or something. Um, he calls him Tom Ale. <laughs> Tom Ale. Oh, Tom Ale. Great. Get yourself a nice ale. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. But he's awesome. And uh, a find, I think, of the... Well, there's a few finds of that, that um, particular trial, but mm. so nice just to have a solid, solid front row in that pack. Absolutely. I was really happy for him because, yeah, I've, I've been excited about his prospects since the end of the last season. I'm like, man, I want to see what this guy can do. And just to see him get out there and just rip in, like he just he just went and went and went and he was damaging and he was consistent. So like yeah, that was that was really cool. Um but uh, in terms of the halves combo we've spoken about Metcalf, who is pretty quick. Uh but his um his combination with um, Timaide and Martin was actually uh, pretty solid. Like, I thought that both of those boys looked pretty good as as backup sort of well, at least Metcalf's a backup option, but there's some some good options there for us going forward. Yeah, I think Tamari just seems to give a bit of a calming influence. Uh, doesn't seem to get frazzled or, you know, play frazzled. You know, like some halves, you know, inexperienced halves can overplay hands and just do real dumb shit. Um, yeah, he just picks his moments. Uh, you know, real good game awareness, so... I think the second try, um, they scored off a quick play the ball. He got in. I think it's the only one of the only play the balls he had because I was mm. looking at it, uh, the stats, and I think it was most times the play the ball's like what, three and a half seconds, four seconds. He did like a two and a half second play the ball, quick ball, turnover, try. Um, good little kicking game. So, yeah, I think that's going to have a pretty good influence on SJ, I think. Um, let him be Mr. Razzle. Um, and then Metcalf, yeah, out of this world, man, like, just natural raw speed, eye for a gap. Um, probably a fullback, I think, when you think mm. about those attributes. Yep. Um, but just nice to have, you know, players competing. And look, if he, you know, if he plays fullback, then Chance may have to play centre. And then, as Moneta said, yeah, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. But um, yeah, rather have that spot rather than a lot. The last two three years, we're like scraping together team mm -hmm. you know so um yeah really like the halves they were they were, they were solid mm -hmm. yeah there was some uh some really good young players coming through if anything it bodes well for our new south wales cup team especially uh, in their prospects this year uh, moneta you uh you had a uh, i guess i'm gonna call it a, a metaphorical run-in last week where uh our interviewee uh freddie lussick managed to rattle your cage um, but uh, on the field, he uh, he managed to get rattled up a little bit by um, <laughs> Stefano uh, uh, Otoi Kamanu. Uh, oh my bro, God. What, do you, what do you think he said to him? But, uh, he, must have not, he must have not pleased him in some way. I don't know, but you got to give it to Lusaka. He still tried even when he was on the ground to tackle him, and that just proves how tough nut he is. Eh? He's mm. willing to go the extra mile despite you know the size disadvantage. So get on him, eh, Lusik. So... Um, I get rattled, but he doesn't seem to get rattled too much. He just gets, he, he can seem to pick himself up pretty quickly compared to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's good to see you remembering to smile as well, bro. So that's, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Isaac, the, uh, I, I guess we were spoken about Montoya on the left side. I'm interested as to where he fits because a lot of people may have assumed that he might have gone to the center spot and maybe with an Ed Cossey outside him. Uh, but now, having seen Montoya play outside uh, Braden Williami, um, does that maybe change things a little bit in your eyes? Uh, it's only been one preseason game, but I'm already on um, uh, on Buddha's side in regards to maybe the makeup of the team. After seeing what Metcalf can do, um, I know CNK has been earmarked for that fullback role, but I can just see a massive amount of potential of Metcalf playing at fullback. And not a not only is it he a threat with the ball in hand, but with his ability to ball play, um, with experience in the halves, I think he'd offer a lot more uh, at the back attacking wise than CNK. CNK would be, um, you know, pretty solid. He, you know, he's a fullback. He's experienced. He knows how to play the game. But um, maybe putting him at centre and leaving Marcello on the wing opens up a few more options from the back. Um, and if we're going to be playing with a smaller, a smaller forward pack and the 
the back three are going to have to do a bit of work. I don't see Metcalf shirking those responsibilities either. I see him running the ball up with a bit of gusto and not being afraid of the contact because he's already shown he's willing to run with the ball. Um, you put him, put him at full back, he's going to be doing the same thing. And I think Montoya on the wing uh, is is a good is a good threat to have too. So I don't know if that's what you're thinking there, Dan, but that's kind of my thought process around the the makeup of the. Yeah, back. I know it's only one game, but yeah, mm. I, I get it. Yeah, I, I think that the only question to that, or my Ficardo, my only thought to that is, Webby might want CNK at the back. He might just want to start defensively as sound as he can and I guess you know in the early rounds and, and just see where the attack is at and I think I think for me if we can't score enough points and we, but the defense is pretty solid around us I think then you can start to maybe make some risk take I don't say risks because you got to score points right you know like NRL you can't just you know, you're not going to win 12-8 each week you got to score enough points but the issue we've had in the past is Defensively, we've been frail as well. So I think Charles just gives you that experience as a fullback, organising the defence, all that good stuff. Um, but, yeah, I think if we struggle for points, um, he may have to do something like that as well. So, yeah, it, I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting to see how we go. Um, maybe not in the first couple of rounds, but if we need him, then we might, we might need to do that move. Um, Moneta, we had a – actually, we'll, we'll do this as a Say My Name, Say My Name segment because I've heard his name said uh, a couple of times uh, pretty poorly. Uh, and that is uh, Tane Tuapiki, <laughs> who uh, played fullback um, starting in the starting lineup against the Tigers. And uh, he's just been signed on as one of the top 30 players. So he's, he's gained himself you know, an, an NRL contract, which is good. He's this guy who's got a lot of promise. Look um, sharp, look amazing, great feet. Yeah. Shit haircut. Like sort that too out, <laughs> but hey, the kids these days, huh? I thought yeah, he was just trying to like days. just add a bit of bulk, like just where he could, like you know. Nah, no, um, fair enough, fair enough. He add some grams to the isn't playing he? weight. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, he's not he's not the biggest um, guy, eh? but um, you know, he's got a bit of zip, eh? Can yeah. move. He plays That's right. big. Mm. He does. Yeah, he's a small guy, but he plays big. Yeah, he's also a small guy who played smaller. Like ben yeah, Barber. that's right. And, and he's, he's got a. Yeah. He's got a good um, defensive mindset as well in terms mm. of, you know, stuff he does scrambling or, or, you know, the lines to run on defense to is cover he the, up. Is he the Marty Jaden Campbell? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think he could be the, um, maybe the second coming perhaps of uh, Kevin Locke. But, um, Ooh, oh, yeah. 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 Um, which excites yes, me because, yes. man, I love Kevin Locke. Uh, but back to the uh, pain to a picky. Uh, that's not quite correct on the, uh, on the surname. Uh, his, his, he's got a Maori surname, so his name is actually Tuo Piki. Tuo, Tuo Piki, yeah. So Tuo Piki. There we go. Tuo um, so Piki. They kind of just skip by the uh, the AU part, uh, the commentators, but it's it's not Tuo Piki, it's Tuo Piki. So um, yeah, that's your say my name, say my name segment. I actually had a message from one of my mates back in New Zealand going, oh, there was a an article on um, News Hub about, you know, the pronunciation of names after the Indigenous game. He's like, man, you guys should do a bit of chat about it. And I was like, bro, we got you, bro. We got you covered. <laughs> um, same my name, same my name. Anyways, uh, so in terms of, yeah, his play, he, he looked pretty good, Tane. Um, were there any other standouts for you, Monitor, that you thought, oh, hang on, who is this guy and, and what could he be in, you know, one, two, three years' time? Oh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he played in the opposite centre from Vailia. Brendan William. Yeah. I thought he stood out pretty well. He looked classy. Yeah, yeah. He was, like, really good. Like, just played it simple. And I think that just kind of dictates to what Lassick was saying before, just staying in our lane and just playing our positions and keeping it simple. And um, he played it simple, just charged up pretty hard, reliable in defence and everything like that. But he impressed me. Um the centres. Um, but again, I just think, you know, we've got uh, a lot of good players, which creates competition. So I'm looking forward to um, the season because I don't think we had that quite last year. We, we had the talk of, you know, um, the been training hard and everything like that, but I don't think we had that level of competition within the squad. Mm. And, uh, you know, you, you talk about, um, you know, uh, 
to a picky, um, um, you know, being just signed up to the 30 man squad. Now that adds a bit of competition to the full back position with uh, Metcalf and CNK. And then you talk about the halves, you know, uh, TMM and Sean Johnson and possibly Metcalf. So there's positions in Pompeii and now, you know, Vialia and, um, forgot his name already but you know there's this positions that are and Dylan Walker oh my god it, it can go on so it, it, it excites me so yeah mm. but yeah now um yeah that, that's actually I'd forgotten about him as well um Isaac the play of Viliami Vailea man he uh he looks like he's really benefited from you know having quite a few games in first grade last year because he he just looked like at times he was a cut above the the opposition he looked good yeah he looked really good he was playing with confidence you know and a smile on his face and i think everyone loves to see that too you know it was just a preseason game but he's obviously loving it um i think that center spots there for him to lose uh, i just like what he what he offers he showed a clean pair of heels on one of those tries i think it was a turnover ball spilled um and then it was offloaded to him or he might have picked it up on the fly and just was away. Um, just gassed him around the outside, eh? Yeah, just gassed. You'd love to see that. You'd love to see a big man back himself with a bit of speed. Um, it's just threatening. Uh, yeah, I love the way he's playing. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him this year. Mm. Yeah. But, um, oh, sorry, another player I thought actually played pretty well was Gwen Aitken, the, the second, uh, Jackson Ford. He looked like Gwen <laughs> <Ewan> Aitken. <laughs> Am I wrong saying that? Yeah, Jackson Aitken. Aitken ran? Yeah. yeah. He really did. Just... Yeah, just a white boy in the mold of centre stroke, edge yeah. backer. Yeah, I thought he um, played pretty Saint well. St. George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, St. George, George player as well, your former St. George player. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice to have players like that um, considered Solid. to be on the fringes, you know, of the uh, of the mm. 17. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah really cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess thinking bigger picture, I know it's... It's easy for us to do because we've been starved of success. <laughs> but how much do we need to temper our excitement, I guess, after watching that game and being like, Ooh, these guys look pretty good. <laughs> uh, we need to bring that shit right down. <laughs> <laughs> we had like five first grade players in there as well. So mm. well, then what we take away is there's a crop of players I think they were kind of just a combination of middle forward back rowers that are a mixture of up and coming young juniors as well. So they were like, uh, and also some familiar names as well, like mm. um, Isaiah Vangana. Um, so obviously it's uh, Joe's son, I believe. Um, and then there was like, there was a, a Kalani going in the mix. So obviously proud of rugby, Māori heritage. So there was a bunch of players that also, I think they were kind of, I don't want to use the term journeyman, but there was a few other players that maybe in their mid to late 20s played a bit of combination fringe NRL, played around the league in the last few years, have been away because obviously there's been no reserve grade league here. So I just thought that it was nice to have some some pretty dynamic, solid forwards available, you know, because we're going to get injuries. We're going to, people, you know, going to get promoted playing well. So I think it's just nice to have that, but We've got to bear in mind, you know, our first team you know, hardly didn't touch the park, you know. Mm. Uh, Tamaiti, you had uh, Bunty, Tamale, you know, and you had uh, Mathello. And that's really about it, eh? So, mm. um, but not nice. It looks like what Webby's trying to do, encouraging the guys, the young guys are stepping up. So it's down to the senior players to, to do that. Yeah, exciting to see also... Uh, also... Another famous name in rugby league circles, uh, Jacob Laban as well. Mm. Uh, who that the, was the other one. Yeah. The, old, uh, the Fox commentators over in Oz were calling him Laban. Laban. <laughs> I was like, Laban. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, oh, we need to do a say my name, say my name for Jacob Laban. But, um, I just want to make one extra point, but like, acknowledge it wasn't the first. We didn't have most of, the, most of our first grade players on the team, but it showed that we have the potential of depth in regards to the squad for the overall season. So mm. I think you know, I think that's what we've kind of lacked in previous years. You know, we've, we've, we've had so many injuries and then we've had to kind of get players up to scratch pretty quickly and it's impacted us, I think, twice or something. But I think this year mm. what excites me the most is depth. Um, yeah. yeah. Homegrown depth yeah. as well. Yeah, depth. Yeah, mm. yeah. we're not scrounging oh, around for mercenaries and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. 
the last, last, last thing is the Tigers were shit. <laughs> <laughs> And again, they didn't. They didn't have like their four packs. Hey, I'm trying to pump up the Warriors, mate. Flip the tires. Keep a lid on it. Just you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like but, uh, um, like when you're boiling pasta, right, and you got to put the wooden spoon across the the top the of top. the pot so it yeah. doesn't boil yeah. ever. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> don't it's just what Buddha's doing to us. He's like, no, no, just just keep it, you know. Yeah, that Tiger team was I was that guy last like, year. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> a bit more I, gotta give the, um, I need to give the Tigers a rep, though, because they are the only NRL team at the stage who are bringing a game to New Zealand uh, later in the year. So, mm. um, you know, good on them. Um, yeah. And to the rest of well, the team. Let's teams, not start that shame. argument again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all good. Um, Isaac, um, Andrew Webster, you know, first game is head coach, albeit just a trial match, but what do you think he would have been taking from that and, you know, how would he feel about things? I think he'd feel pretty good. Um, I think he just wants to see um, his plans being executed. And I thought the the team played pretty, they played pretty crisp football, you know, they, mm. and, you know, I can't remember who made the point, but stayed in their lane. They just did their jobs and they did them well. And Andrew Webster, you know, I think he'd want to see that as a starting point and then he can build on it, like see where what uh, style, of, not style of play, style of players he has, what they can do, what they can offer, keep it simple and then sort of expand the playbook, so to speak, with mm. these players. Um, but I think he'd just be really happy to see a lot of these up-and-coming Warriors players proving their worth. Because um, we've, we've talked about it uh, a lot last year, you know, just having that breeding ground for the Warriors is what he had back at Penrith. It must be pretty exciting for him to see, oh, I've got some new toys to play with, you know, if I, if I want to. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and he looked pretty, uh, he looked pretty stoic in the old, um, on the old, com- on the old uh, coach's box as well. You know? Tell you so what, he, he, uh, he got upstage there right at the end, didn't he, by old, uh, Mr. Shui Vasashek. <laughs> good to see him. <laughs> He got in late, but man, he made a, a good impact. Like at the end of the game, I was like, "Yeah, get on you, boy. Get you on you." Be careful getting like athlete's foot, you know. On, <laughs> on the mouth. He often, <laughs> he often does shoes uh, of other people's shoes as well. So, could be a real hygiene issue. Uh, <laughs> Next time you see him, he's got all these boils around his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's he's actually... got the beard? Aaron Woods. Aaron Woods. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Woods. Second. Too. We, yeah. we we need to get him on here. Eh? We need to have a chat with him just about, um, you yeah. know. I'm interested in, like, like you say, how, what kind of shoes he uses, technique, just there's a few things. I think there's a bit more to it. I think he gets up in, in random bars. He's, he's joined the Warriors and on his Instagram page, so, oh. so his reels popped up. And like, he just be at a random bar and someone will shoey his shoe and he'll shoey their shoe. So <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Did, okay. did you guys well, know about that rule? Like I'm just reading, the, the Warriors activated two bonus competition points after recording more than five line breaks and more than five tries in the win. Ah, the preseason challenge, pre-season is 100 grand challenge. up the grand challenge. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. well, that's going to be uh, that's a good teaser there, Monita. Because yeah, yeah. we're going to be talking about that in the second half of oh. Warriors Anonymous. We're going to get into the preseason challenge. What is it, and why should we care? Uh, as well as a few other things, uh, we'll check in on what's happening with SG Ball. Uh, also, we've got the uh, the Indigenous and Māori All Stars game to go over, uh, as well as just a bit of a chat about you know what to expect in the upcoming trial match uh, against the Storm. So, a bit to come here in the second half of Warriors Anonymous, and we're back after a uh, a short break there, which was much needed by the uh, the boys here at Warriors Anonymous. I can tell you that much, uh, fellas. Uh, unfortunately, a bit of bad weather floating around New Zealand at the moment with the old cyclone Gabrielle. Um, so, so everyone in the you know the North Island, um, you know, Upper North Island, wherever you are, if um, yeah, if you're affected by this man, thinking of you guys, um, yeah, real real bad run at the moment. So, hang in There's there. A small um, small window that that it could affect the game this weekend, just as an FYI, obviously. Okay. Yeah, storm getting to Christchurch. So I think it should pass through, but yeah, who knows? Well, it's, it's already claimed one victim. And that was the SG Ball match, which was scheduled for Sunday, just gone. Um, real shame because um, the Warriors were going to take on Manly, and it would have been the first, you know, the team's first game at home. Like, <laughs> 
like ever in the SG ball grade. So um, yeah, a bit of a bit of a bummer there, but um, but that's all right. They've postponed it, and they'll um, I, I guess they'll revisit what they're going to do with that one at a future date. Um, the next game that they have is away to the Melbourne Storm, um, and I can tell you that the Melbourne Storm have lost both of their first games um, to begin the season. Lost to the Raiders 66-0 and uh, went down 34-20 to the Illawarra Steelers. Illawarra um, Steelers. Yeah, I tell you what, there's uh, there's about what 16 teams in that SG Ball grade and there's some good old names in there, man. Like North Sydney Bears are there. Oh, Belmain yeah. Tigers. So, uh, yeah, some of the... Uh, the Steelers the, have uh, the, the BHP logo. <laughs> Is that it? BHP? I can only, yeah, I can only hope. Steelers. BHP. Yeah. Yeah, Rod Bushart. <laughs> There's some good players. Johnny Simon Paul, came to the Paul Warriors. McGregor. That's right. Yeah, bloody uh, the yellow Warriors. Rod Bushart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 John Cross with the Kelly like here. Yeah, he plays for the Storm, eh? Tyron, <laughs> yeah, Tyron, yeah. Tyron. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, before we get into chatting a bit more about that uh, pending Storm match for the top team, um, the, the next trial. We're going to have a little look at the All-Stars game, which was played over the weekend. A little bit of a, I guess, an interesting sort of lead into the game. Not sure how much was maybe political, how much was driven by where the game was being played, but a lot of guys pulled out of it um, before, yeah, before a ball was kicked. So, um, Isaac, what are your thoughts on the game itself and how it is organised and scheduled say uh yeah the scheduling is always going to be an issue it's a pretty long season there's a lot of stuff going on with the nrl um but i think they have to make a commitment somewhere to the game to to grow it and the indigenous game is a good way of doing it and paying respect where you know or credit where credit's due to the players that make up the nrl you know indigenous um players make a large proportion of the NRL rosters these days. Um, so it's up to the NRL, it's up to the governing body to make sure that credit is, um, credit is, credit, uh, credit is, <laughs> let me put this again, let me rephrase this. Got a metal uh, boys. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, I've got the case of them in the ears, shit, shit, shit. But um, they, yeah, they've got to put an emphasis on the game. They've got to do it the right way. They've got to show it some love and yeah, give it the respect that it deserves. Um, and yeah, the players pulling out and stuff like that. I know there's a whole bunch of different reasons for why they did, um, but yeah, it just goes to show um, what's really thought about it in general. I think, mm. um, but that's just my opinion on it. Yeah, it's a hard one, such a hard one because of where it is placed in the calendar, and you've got that issue about preparing for the season versus you know going and, and playing rep footy, which is a real shame. Um, but Moneta, I guess on the upside, um, there was a few games going on over the weekend. Um, the Wahine played, the women's team, uh, and also there was a couple of um, games of touch game, or touch as well, touch rugby, so, or touch league, I think it was. Um, so really good to at least have the game come to New Zealand for the first time and, and in Rotorua, which looked like a, an awesome event. Yeah, I think it just goes back to kind of trying to grow the game back in New Zealand and trying to get that grassroots and just kind of touching with the kind of, you know, locals and so forth. So um, I'll bet you don't get all the major stars. we got some, like, you know, Cobo and stuff like that. Um, but I think it's uh, any chance we've got like that to bring it over, I think it's a good thing because most of the time it's been played over in Australia. And, um, but, yeah, it would have been great to see, you know, most of the stars come over to get that really A-grade product. But I still, I still think, I think they... Even though I didn't watch the game, but I heard they still came away with a pretty good product in regards to the event itself. So um, hopefully they can get the timing thing sorted out next year, but um, we'll see what happens. But I think you know, if we're going to start to try to develop the game in New Zealand, I think this is still, this is a good thing, along with the, what the Warriors are trying to do with the uh, SG, uh, SG ball and so forth. Yeah, fair enough. Um, keep that uh, keep that microphone nice and close, bro. <laughs> So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you're moving it away. It's like, hello? My rust needle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, uh, Bora, you watched the game um, and you've you've seen, uh, I guess, some um, entertaining footage. 
mm. uh, from TikTok uh, about, uh, uh, about some of the fans in Rotorua. Um, I was getting a few flashbacks to the homecoming game last year. We had about seven streakers at the field, <laughs> or at least pitch invaders, should I say. I was in the water. Streakers probably <laughs> in place, but, uh, but bro, what, what were your thoughts on, what, what's up with our streaking uh, kind of epidemic we've got going on? Oh, mate. They were, um, yeah, the locals were restless. Um, they had seven at once. It was like that, eh? It was just all at the same time. And even kids, and the kids out there. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, obviously, it was, uh, 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 how would you say, um, excitement levels sort of spilled over. Because I think from a crowd perspective, uh, it was pretty good. I think the whole week was pretty good. Um, you know, one of the things I p- took took away from, especially the after matches, how the Indigenous boys really love the embracing of, uh, of Te Reo Māori, Māori culture. Mm. So for them seeing how that is portrayed in, in what, as you'd say, is one of the heartlands of, of um, especially from a, a league perspective, um, Māori Rugby League. So they yeah, really saw that. So from that point of view, it was great. Game as well was just entertaining, despite... I think it was more on the Kiwi side. We didn't, uh, the uh, Māori side, we didn't kind of have as many marquee players, um, but still some, you know, like Fisher Harris and uh, Tapani were there. Um, still a good team. Um, mm. And that's the quality. You still put out a, a quality side. Uh, halves a bit young. Um, and then you look at the back line from the Indigenous side. It was awesome. You know, like, Latrell Mitchell was the, the biggest star in the game, right? One yeah, of ugly, yeah. oh, Nathan Cleary, but in terms yeah. of like, yeah, like how would you elite athlete? I don't know he's not necessarily like the fittest elite look, but you know the guy who can do anything and you, mm. you know could terrorize anyone. Yep. You know, number one threat, you know that you know him come along. Nico Hines is um, just it doesn't matter what country he's in that hair just gets slicker <laughs> and wetter, and he was just ball on the string. He was just owning us. Um, and like, and, and like Cody Walker, like he just seems to have time, eh? He seems, you know what he's going to do. You know what he's going to do. It's a second man play. You know it's going to happen. Just can't do anything about it. So, mm. um, but great game, and it went to the wire. Um, and apart from maybe, I oh, just still a bit irked about this kind of arms all around the ball tackler, and it just slips out. You know, and it's mm. like. No, loose carry. You know, you know, kind of a loose carry, but everyone's yeah, just fucking going at the ball, eh? So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was a bit of an anticlimax at the end because it was a set up for a grand slam finish, but great contest. Yeah. Two teams loved it, bashed each other up, and then we're like, hey, bro, hey, bro, at the end of the game. So that was yeah. awesome. That's a really important part of the entire week. Um, and I think that adds so much value to, you know, what you know what everyone's doing, the the guys and the girls all getting together and a lot of a lot of times there are people either in the indigenous side or the maori side and they are they're actually finding out a lot about their background for the first time like um you know you think of dylan walker he's he he was in the setup last year and, and i think you know that's kind of really sparked a bit of a, a desire in him to know more and, and and you know just you know uh be a bit closer to that side of his his heritage but um, it's, it is an interesting aspect that uh, for the indigenous guys, like, yeah, you're right, like having or, or le- at least seeing the example of how te reo and language and culture and, and everything is being really embraced. They could be like, damn, like, you know, this, we can't actually do this. You know, this is this is um, this is something that's really achievable um, as you know, as, as we move into the future. But um, hopefully um, that they can maybe bottle that a bit and also harness a little bit more of the, uh, let's say scheduling sort of kindness to the, uh, the fixture in general, general, but, uh, uh, but I guess, Buddha, uh, any players stand out to you from either the Māori side or the, the indigenous side, obviously Nico Hines got the, um, the man of the match, but, um, anyone else stand out for you? Yeah. I mean, definitely, but the, the star players, you know, Tarpane, Fisher Harris, were solid. How do we deny to, you know, pad the nine on his back, but when they get to get together, they sort of mix it all up as well. Um, Paul Turner was all right. You know, he was thrown into the halves and showed potential, what he could, you know, what sort of potential he would he would have. I mean, he was 
touted as, I think when Dylan Brown was coming up back in Auckland days, um, Paul Turner was slightly ahead of him in terms of that quality, and we all know how good Dylan Brown is um, these days as well. So, no, he it was all right. And then, yeah, I just thought the Indigenous uh, boys um, just really solid. Um, mm. And I think I, li- I like the fact that we're just a couple of guys, you know, probably fringe NRL players as well. Mm. Get to rub shoulders with, I mean, the, the Trowels and Cody Walkers, as I mentioned as well. And, and look, Cobbo, that just goes to show how of scary that, that guy's going to be, eh? He mm. is, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going to be on the end of, well, on the end of, or perhaps at the back for the Brisbane Broncos. But, um, mm. you know, they've got a competition at the back, don't they? Still rolled uh, the, the Ricky brothers playing pretty well too. Jordan played well and, uh, and his brother Preston, who was one of those guys on the, you know, just on the fringe of first grade. Uh, and he's actually in the Panthers system. So a good little spot. He showed a bit of promise, I thought, but, um, uh, exciting times ahead um, for uh, for a lot of these guys. Uh, speaking of which, uh, a lot of trials going on around the NRL on the weekend. That's trial matches, by the way. Um, so <laughs> that's right. Uh, so the NRL preseason challenge. I've <laughs> I guess I haven't actually really looked into what this all means or whatnot. But has anyone got any information on the preseason challenge? What it is, and should we really care? There's money involved. Okay. <laughs> okay. involved. There's a, I think there's 100 Gs up for grabs for the uh, overall winner. Um, and there's certain stats that the teams need to hit in game to get bonus points and whatnot, which I think the Warriors got full bonus points as well. Or I don't know if it's not full, quite. But... So the, they got 14 points. So the ladder for the preseason challenge, which is two rounds, yeah. is the Roosters and the Sea Eagles on 15 points oh. each. Mm. Competition points, the Warriors in third. It was line breaks well, so. and offloads, was it? Were bonus points? Line breaks. There's definitely line breaks. amounts of tries yeah. Yeah. as well. Line um, breaks and tries, was it? It's super fucking confusing. Um, <laughs> so we've got two bonus points, but we're on 14. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks like the Tigers will, cannot win it because they're on zero points. Right. Yeah, that's um, it. Yeah, so... I guess it's aimed at making sure it's not a dead rubber. It's something, you know, something in terms of a spectacle for the crowd, uh, a bit more attacking, mm. you know, offloads and, and scoring tries. But, um, yeah, was it needed? I don't know. All fans kind of want to get behind their team anyway. Mm. Um, what is interesting is St. Helens are over here, aren't they? Oh, yeah. With old Connie. Yeah. Good so they obviously oh, the NRL having um, 17 teams. Um, we needed that 18th team because of the Dolphins to turn up as well. So um, at least uh, St. Helens turned up because apparently Wayne Bennett didn't even turn up to his game in the weekend. Uh, it was up in Townsville, Mackay, somewhere. I'm just pointing north. Up, up there, right? <laughs> up there. So, really. Bit of criticism. Yeah. The super coach didn't go to the first head out for the Dolphins, but... <laughs> Uh, let's be honest, I think Christian Wolf is really the, is the guy pulling the strings down there, isn't he? Christian Wolf. Well, it's, yeah, he's going to be taken over at least um, either next year or the year after. But well, Wayne's 98, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Yoda, that's <laughs> Wayne Bennett for you. <laughs> Don't think <it's> you try. <laughs> I mean, maybe Wayne's just like, you know, everyone else, like, sort of like, yeah, pre-season. <laughs> Give me a yell when the season starts, boys. Um, yeah, I've done 60 pre-seasons, <laughs> boys. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah uh, i guess um isaac it's it's an interesting one because from what i've seen especially over on this side of the tasman and aussie um there's a lot more engagement between people and the preseason games than i've really noticed before and obviously to do with the warriors as well so um what do you think that's down to like what do you yeah what do you think that's all about uh, maybe for the Warriors club, it's just actually having a full season back here and people not getting enough of a fix of their league. So, yeah, if you, if you look back in retrospect, how tough has the past two, three years been for the Warriors? Um, and then to get a... <laughs> yeah, so tough. To get a pre-season <laughs> game like we had, uh, even if we hadn't had performed the way that we did, I think people would just be happy that, hey, the Warriors are back home you know 
they will be back home for the rest of the season too. So there's that level of excitement. I know I've got that level of excitement myself to see uh, a hell of a lot more games. <laughs> yeah, Spirit Fingers um, at home. So I think the engagement's there. Um, you know, all the Warriors Facebook groups are popping off again. Um, so it's, yeah, good, good to see. So I think that's probably got a massive part to play is just being back home. And hopefully the Warriors uh, club feeds off that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know people are keen when you see about 700 team lists that go around, <laughs> all different. I think I've seen Bunty play fullback, you know, like, people got, I love it. It's people are passionate, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. I think, I think uh, yeah, well, I, I named the team and I named myself at halfback. Um, <laughs> no, um, just on the, the groups that you mentioned there, Isaac, um, I forgot to mention this last week. Very bad for me. Uh, this year, uh, Warriors Anonymous are actually we're teaming up with a, a couple of other groups uh, to do with the uh, the Warriors content. So uh, we are teaming up with the guys at Warrior Nation. War, War, Warrior Nation? Yeah. Uh, and also Warriors Uncut. Um, they are, yeah, they're basically, in terms of running live events, that's Warrior Nation. Warriors Uncut doing awesome um, highlights and all sorts of cool stuff. I know Raz went to the, um, the Indigenous game um, the All Stars game on the weekend, so sounded like he had quite a time. Um, and also, we've got a couple of real um, close friends of the podcast and the uh, the Warriors Anonymous group. That's uh, the Warrior Holic Zane Matsumoto, uh, and also uh, and the boys at um, SENZ as well, who have um, yeah been really really awesome uh, in terms of hooking us up with uh, all sorts of cool stuff. So um, just yeah. That's that's something to. Is that the nickname. What's the collective noun? What's the nickname? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. So the, uh, the the working title is the Watang Clan. Um, so uh... <laughs> Watang. <laughs> yeah, been watching the old uh, the series recently about the uh, the origins of uh, the Wu Tang Clan, and I saw this uh, coming together of you know all disparate parties, and um, yeah, it was it was kind of cool. So um, yeah, so that's kind of just something to keep an eye and ear out for. We're going to be pushing all sorts of stuff that's going on around the place, and and likewise uh, them with us. So uh, stay tuned. Um, monitor. Uh... <laughs> we have got a uh, a trial game coming up. Well, potentially coming up, um, weather permitting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, well, I mean, we should be all right. Um, the storm are coming. Um, the, the Melbourne storm. You have to yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah let's clear clear excuse the pun. Uh, yeah. yeah. Storms <laughs> Sorry, Auckland. Sorry, guys. Uh, the Melbourne storm are coming uh, due to play us in Christchurch uh, on this coming weekend. So, mm. what would you expect or hope to see from our guys? Same, same. Hopefully, just staying back to the. Staying with our lane, I like that comment from what uh, I said last week. Just keeping it simple and just kind of being efficient. Um, but yeah, I, I can dispute how they played. Um, maybe a few more first grade players just to see how they're going. We could chuck Sean Johnson in maybe, or I'd like to see Dylan Walker. Is he still is he still injured, Dylan? I, I thought no, he was I injured. injured. Was oh. he injured? No, oh, I forget to think he was injured. Jazz, jazz is. Yeah, jazz. Yeah, yeah. So just um, maybe testing out a few more first grade players. But yeah, I know Melbourne have Olam. Olam is injured, um, and he's quite a key player within, within their squad. So he plays centre, and he's got a stocky centre they've lost. And so um, yeah, but just same, same. I was impressed. Yeah. Like I said, there's been a there's been a few, quite a few injuries come out of this preseason already. I think um, Xavier Savage from Canberra, he's out for two months. Oh, Olam's Savage. out for... Yeah, mm -hmm. Please give it up. Um, Olam's Savage. out for four to six weeks. Connor Watson um, uh, at the Roosters can't buy a trick. He's out for the mm -hmm. season with an ACL or rupture. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of, couple of troops uh, falling over from preseason. So it makes for an interesting start to the, uh, mm. the, the regular season. Mm, that's a that's a really good point in terms of coming out of a preseason. You kind of you want to at least have your you know your your full um, full stack of troops to choose from. So um, yeah, a few big losses. There. I feel I feel a bit sorry for Connor Watson just because of the run he's had. Like he, he missed all of last year as well, I think. So um, yeah, it's always a shame when those young guys yeah. just keep having uh, injuries. You know, um, 
I'm guess, I guess you, we all know all about injuries. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but uh, uh, in terms of team selections for this next game, are you thinking maybe we're getting pretty close to selecting our top lineup against the Storm? Um, to the injury point, I think no. Like, I just think, especially the season players, are profession, you know, the ones who have been around a long time, they know how to get ready for the start of an NRL season. Um, and look, um, Craig Bellamy won't even have Munster and the gang there, you know, like, there's no point really risking mm-hmm. them. So I would actually like to see perhaps some of the, yeah, the wider fringe and, you know, a couple of the more junior uh, first team members getting some minutes under their belt as well. But I'd also like them maybe to look at the players he's thinking about that are going to be the nucleus of the, you know, like you've got this game day 17 and you probably got, well, you've got 30 contracted players, don't you? So let's actually bring that group together. I know there were some SG ball players and a few other, you know, bring people they bring in they've upgraded contracts, but yeah, I just like to maybe select, uh, how, how would you say it? It's probably a mix of fringe first and that second tier and actually mm-hmm. give them a really good run because it'd be good to get them in a real quality football because in the first five rounds, you know, you have two or three injuries in one position. Bang. Someone's coming up there as well. So that's what I'd like to see. Just build on what we had last week, sprinkle a little few extra fringe first grade players and I'll buy it. Be good. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and then you do a salt bay during the grand final, like he did at the soccer world cup. What salt bay is just going to jump into the NRL grand final and just, you know, grab the trophy? Grab the trophy. <laughs> wow. There's the fucking most random fucking thing ever, eh? Like, surely security. Like, Messi looked at him just going, Yeah. I like this it. moment, I have to hang out on this. <laughs> this ponytail <laughs> douchebag over here. <laughs> There's salt and <laughs> meat. God damn it! Who would be the uh, Who would be the Australian equivalent of a salt bay just jumping out onto the field after the grand final and just picking up the uh, the trophy? Ooh, ooh George Kambaras. Good... <laughs> Who's that? He's the guy from MasterChef, the little short. Greek dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good. We have a winner <laughs> yeah. right there. Wearing yeah, sunglasses and. Uh, um, a wig ponytail. That was going to be the French guy, wow. Manu of um, my kitchen. Oh, rules. yeah. Manu. <laughs> Manu. Where's the sauce? I actually thought of a good idea as well for the preseason <laughs> challenge. The they should add in um, streakers. If we if we had streakers, we would we'd kill that competition. But um, there was a few other trial matches going on around the place, um, which, mm. uh, you know, um, Broncos got a new fullback. His name's <laughs> something Walsh. Um, yeah, it looked all right. Um, <laughs> any, <laughs> any, anyone spot his, uh, his banana kick that he did backwards? Yeah. yeah. Was... I mean, the kid's got talent and he's, he's obviously, the people who hate him, I hate on the situation and came and goes, this is a young guy, gave two years here. He, and look, to his credit, he's, ta- he's, he's a first grade player now. He's a two seasons of first grade. Mm. Looks like he's, looks a bit stronger. And back, you know, and I think he actually has to, you know, see the Himokobo play fullback, right? Mm. So he's fighting for his position. So uh, good on him. But we know that if he's in the front line, that you can just plow him, right? You can run Bunty at him or, or AFB. So Or Martello. Oh, Martello. Martello. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that. Martello just running at Reese Walsh full tilt. What do you think Walsh is going to do? He sounded like a Latino. Uh-uh. I saw what I saw what happened to Staines. I'm out of here. <laughs> I am not having that shit. <laughs> I was just just imagining. Home. I was imagining Tim Sheen's confronting Montoya after the game. Like, your name is Marcelo Iniga Montoya. You murdered my fullback. <laughs> <laughs> you murdered my fullback. <laughs> Prepare uh, to die. Offended to his <laughs> credit, he got back up. But yeah, Walsh. Walsh competition with Cobo. I mean, if you had to pick one of the two, who would you rather win? That competition for the fullback spot. I, well, in an unbiased context, I, I really rate Cobo. I think he's he's just, yeah. He's got 
like the full he's got the full array of skills and abilities but you know it's just a matter of harnessing it i mean you look at him he's got the similar kind of dimensions to latrell he's lightning fast um skills for days like yeah uh but yeah the, then that becomes a question of what to do with little reesey um but hey to be fair, I think they go both because they get both, right? You just put Cobb on the wing and you get both, really. You're playing you two know. fullbacks, pretty much. Yeah, you play two fullbacks yeah. as well. And like Cobb, and Cobb can finish, man. Like, yeah. You know, just outrageous. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was, uh, um, I caught a little bit of the Bunnies um, Manly game as well, the trial game on the weekend. Uh, they got a, a young kid called um, Te Alpa, who I'm not sure if I'm saying that exactly right, but um, Te Alpa is. Uh, five eight, and he just looked exactly like Cody Walker. Like he was running the same sort of lines and just damaging, setting up tries. And I was like, "Wow, who is this kid?" Um, but yeah, just um, someone to keep an eye on. But um, uh, anyone want to talk about any other trial stuff? I just saw the Roosters Storm game hmm? as well, and so obviously Olam okay, broke his and broken his wrist or something. Um, but it looked like the um, the cheese was having a bit of a set too with his, his old team as well. So I like, yeah, <laughs> of course, a bit of shine of there and a lot of chat. Um, notice that. Um, I noticed something unfortunate for Ali Couture, and it's kind of like it felt like it was in a Warriors jersey a little bit. So in the line, the play sort of kept second phase and it got a bit frantic. He kind I felt like he kind of got caught out, stepped on the inside, and they scored a couple of tries in his zone, you know, and it's just when it was a little bit unstructured and, you know, a little mean we were around the big men, which is always hard, but I just thought, oh, no, I didn't, you know, you didn't want that to be the opening of Ellie's Melbourne Storm career to be kind of less, less grasping at people because mm. um, Bellamy will probably be fucking fizzing about that. <laughs> Um, and then the only thing, the only other thing I noticed in that same game is I think um, Jackson Barlow is playing for the Roosters now. He was at South, and I'm like, yep. how the fuck can the Roosters continue to get like a myriad <laughs> of first grade players <laughs> in the salary cap in the thirty? There you go. Yeah, that's the Roosters, isn't it? It's a it's a good life in the uh, eastern suburbs of Sydney. I can tell you that. Much. <laughs> Um, one, other, one other thing from the trial games as well, Tigers, Asu Kapawa. Is it Kapawa? Kapawa. Kapawa. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is the prop doing out in centre? Because that guy is huge. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge bitch. He was a big guy. He's, he's, he's blocked up, eh? Yeah. He was He was a bit more slight frame last year. But, um, yeah, he's, he's definitely... He's packed on a little bit, um, bulked up. So, Yeah. I guess that Scary. helps for the uh, the rigors of uh, week in week out footy. Um, uh, what was I going to say about? No, no, I've forgotten it completely. Never mind. Uh, oh, <laughs> I was actually going to say um, the way we're kind of going. We've been chatting about Walsh. We've been chatting about Eli Uh I'm going to mention Hayes Perham as well. Who played for the oh, yeah. the uh, the Maori All Stars and is apparently in line to start for the Bulldogs. So it was kind of quite interesting watching his progress and how he's going oh, nice. we, can, we can actually start up a, a spin-off which is uh talking about just x warriors players have you got the name for it i've got the name for it oh here we go okay yep once we're warriors rule <laughs> 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 on the string yeah <laughs> and it's uh it's, it's brought to you you'll by farm back. fresh eggs eh? like, you'll be back <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said Jake by must be at X Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be back. Yeah. Just like the same game. You'll be so yeah, maybe we do that every every now and then we'll just do a bit of a runner roll over a once for Warriors team. Yeah. <laughs> See how they're doing. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's Warriors, X Warriors team. We need to get the Because we do have a few um a few sound fix that I haven't actually utilized so far this year. But, um, here we go. It's gonna be <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be uh <laughs> Oh, that would have been a good one for Charlie Staines. <laughs> oh, no, this is not even. You know uh, that town that Rort Doing sounds like? You remember yeah. that sound, Dave? With... Yeah. <laughs> you know me neither. <laughs> you know what that sound is, though. 
Did you say chat line? Congratulations. <laughs> well, what's the sound? I can't remember. Honestly. Can't you? It was that, you know, that chat line we used to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, kids yeah. just ring up I and it was like the, the, the Tinder before, phone, I, before I, cell phones I, and you're on a touchdown. Oh, yeah. Hi, um, I'm Ryan. I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> I like... Yeah. Um, yeah. Chat yeah. hanging out. And then you like sift it through. Ding, ding, ding. And then, oh, you're being connected. <laughs> I <I'll> remember <laughs> that. Hi, who's that? Who's this? Who's <laughs> the other end? Oh, hey, bro. Oh, yeah. hey, bro. The old, uh, <laughs> was it the old come on callers join the party one? Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on callers join the party. <laughs> what you were talking about ICQ. Remember that? ICQ. Ooh, ICQ. Oh, ICQ. Boing. The, the precursor the... to uh, Messenger. Yeah, yeah. I remember cool. that. <laughs> well, <laughs> old dial-up internet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm put hey. on the phone. Oh, uh, <laughs> struggle was real. Struggle was real. <laughs> I just about the chat to a real female. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, hey, you guys. You do. You guys too. <laughs> oh, hey, bro. No, I actually, I actually went on a date with someone. And we went on ICQ. Jesus. Oh, yeah. And it went bad. Right. <laughs> Maybe we should have gone with first dates. <laughs> we yeah, we were wondering at the start of the show whether we should have done short balls about first dates or uh, or, or TV shows, and we went with TV shows because we felt it would be a little bit more politically correct. But we'll just store that dates one away for um, for a later date. Excuse the pun. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, boys, let's do a hard on now before we jump on out. Um, just wanted to ask you fellas because everyone's spoken about them so far. The name Luke Metcalf is is bouncing around like a rubber ball. My question for you, hard or nah? Gotta go one way or the other, can't be halfway in between. <laughs> that by season's end, will Metcalf crack the starting lineup? Any position just has to be in the starting lineup. Hard. 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 Oh. hard. Okay, cool. Very hard. Unanimous. All right. Everyone's real hard. Okay. You should maybe bring it, bring it in, like bring it real hard. What do you mean, Jared? Everyone's very, everyone's hard. What do you mean? That was you guys. It's all that talk of that chat line. That's right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> hard. Yeah. Now I reckon you say in the first five rounds. Ooh, wow. Okay. What do you make the starting lineup? First, first, eight, first eight rounds. First eight rounds. Right. What do you mean? Go what do you there? make the starting lineup? Or would you, would you be a regular? In the starting lineup in the first eight rounds. Oh, I reckon first three rounds. Oh, oh. oh he's too good to miss out. I just it depends how the season good. goes. Eh? Yeah, yeah, it depends if we if we're not scoring any points. Yeah, you know we've got not low, no line breaks. There's nothing going on. Then yeah, you're gonna have to. Throw he could be on the bench. Feed. He could be like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bench is tough, eh? Because mm. you got. D Buns is our utility, and you can kind of oh, do like the Jackson good. Ford. He's too good in that calf, you know. He's too good. He's, yeah. He's yeah. Too good. yeah. Okay, I well. reckon the question is who just gets the bump, bump, bump for uh, that calf? Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> yeah. Now you remind me of a Marion, buddy, hell. That challenge you had with, buddy. Oh, I almost think Cosy, yeah, Cosy had a good finish last year, but. Um, he didn't look, surplus to he, he was the only one that didn't look too good in the trial. I thought he was okay. Mm. He hey, wasn't hey, don't blame it on Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he yeah, just keep your mental. I mean, with Massa, I play so well, you yeah. know. But yeah. then he's oh, so many conundrums. Yeah, because I mean, you got he had a few Alan costly Stumbeck, mistakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure he offers the upside of uh, errors, but. <laughs> So yes. I had a real um, bad pun. Yeah. But what was I saying on the chat? Like, I'd be pretty worried if I was Adam Pompey. I'd be very worried. Quickly, people are just sort of filling up his little oh. roster spot. Oh, right my God. There. My battery's mm. about um, to go flat. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we better we better wrap it up pretty quick. Um, <laughs> uh, this is YouTube. This, this has been Warriors Anonymous. Um, like us on Facebook or on Twitter or on Insta. Are we on Insta and Twitter? Yeah, yeah, kind of part timers, but part time we'll lovers. Yeah, uh, yeah, need to plug the Facebook group. Join up, tell your friends, 
Um, give us a like on YouTube because we're on there now. Uh, check out the podcast if you're listening. Hey, thanks, guys, for uh, for tuning in. Um, and I think it's – oh, there goes my name. And there goes my yeah. I tried to – And if Manscaped's up. listening, <laughs> as it needs to save his balls. Thank you. So- <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Everyone's just dropping yeah, out. Like everyone's nice. peeling off the tackle. Okay, all right. I, I, I guess that's the end of the show. On behalf of Isaac Sauce, who is still here. Catch you later, bro. See you later, bro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, also on behalf of Moneta Sauce and Daniel Farakura, who just gapped that this is Warriors Anonymous. Um, go the Warriors. Please. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>